Hello guys, so why a rib dome over a geodesic dome or a geodesic dome over a rib dome? Earlier, I talked about the merits of both of those in a video below, and I'll link it to this one so you can see a little bit more detail. So geodesic domes historically have been a little stronger when we start to do what's called scalability. Somebody asked this as a question earlier, or posed it as a statement, rather. And uh, as a geodesic structure gets larger and larger and larger, it actually gets stronger and stronger. A rib dome, if I try to build one, say, 80 feet, and I use the same structure, the same size struts and everything, that's not going to be as strong as a geodesic dome. Uh, at the smaller levels that we're selling our domes, they're just as strong and they can handle a load of snow or wind resistance just as well as its geodesic brothers. All right, so that's not an issue in terms of strength, in terms of that size of a dome. Now, if you want larger, if you contact me and say, hey, Scott, I want a 50-foot dome, which is about a 3,000, 3,500 square foot dome in one dome, then we would have to have engineering talks with our engineers to figure out how we're going to increase strut size and those types of things, which would be a custom build. Now, that stated, we can make your abode larger, and we do that by adding a smaller dome or a series of smaller domes and connect them to your dome, like adding a room, and we just connect them by a hallway. We can also add a larger dome, and then you just have two of those. So, for instance, if you connected two of our main domes together, then you would have roughly a 3,000 square foot uh, house, 1,500 square foot a piece. So, another way is by adding extensions, just like you would a normal house. Now, on our site, GuyDomeSolutions.com, in the gallery, we have pictures showing what each of those scenarios looks like. Now, the reason for this uh, video is because I wanted to tell you why I went with the ribbed. You see, I looked long and hard for something that would accommodate my need and my desire of having hempcrete as a home, but in a dome, because I love domes. Now, with the hemp, in a geodesic structure, none of them could readily accept hemp as its constituent. There's just too many angles, too many trapezoids, too many uh, star patterns, and it just doesn't work. You could do it coming up on a vertical riser, but then as soon as you start to go over, it became a problem. Now, two of the geodesic providers that I talked to actually said, we can do this for you but we're going to have to charge more than double. And really it's because they got into it and they started saying, well, we need to put a dome in a dome, is what it was. So two domes, two geodesic structures, and then you could put your hemp in between those two geodesic structures. Well, the price started getting a little outrageous for me. A rib dome, on the other hand, can be readily cut, depending on how thick the truss is, to accept this hempcrete. And this is exactly what we've done and why we've done this. So for us, we're going to be able to do up to 14 inches. So 14 inches gives me about an R39 value, which is perfect for Florida. That's what they require by code, R39 on the roof. I only need like R7 or so, R9 on the sides, but it's going to be R39 all around, which means this is going to be a perfectly insulated dome. It's going to be insulated for sound. It's going to be insulated for heat, insulated for cold. It's going to moderate the temperature consistently because I'm going to have 14 inches all around. So it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. So once again, for me, guys, there was a lot of lessons learned and a lot of conversations and time wasted to eventually I found rib domes that were pre-built to accept hempcrete. This is why. Peace out.